In this lesson, we're going to talk about dihedral groups. Dihedral groups are basically uh, the groups that represent the rigid motions of a regular n-gon. Now, a regular n-gon, what we mean by that is the following. Regular meaning that all sides and angles are of equal size and n-gon meaning that we have n sides to our polygon. Now, the elements in a group are the types of motions that we can perform on these polygons. So we can rotate them. Let's write that. So we have rotations and we'll designate those with an R. And we have reflections. So we can flip them over. You can call them reflection or flips if you like. And we'll designate those with an S. Now the operation between these elements is function composition. Now notationally this can get a bit messy. For example, if we have uh, R composed with R, you know, we have all this function composition notation running around. That can be a little bit cumbersome. So what we'll do is we'll just write RR without the composition in there. And it's just implied that that's the binary operation for this abstract group. And uh, we'll, we'll just assume that's, that's what we're doing. So we will omit the uh, open circle there that usually designates function composition. And so you might see something like RR, or you might uh, even combine that to mean R uh, composed with itself. So with the superscript uh, 2 there. And this doesn't mean polynomial multiplication. It means R composed with itself. OK, so let's take uh, a look at an example. Before we do that, let's just write down some notation here. And the notation for dihedral groups is the following. It's D sub 2n. And so this is the dihedral group of the regular n gone. And so that's what that n represents. So if we take a look at an example, we'll take a look at D8. Get rid of the stray markings here. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at D8. D8, as we recall, we have uh, 2n. So this is actually going to be the group of rigid motions for the regular 4-gon, otherwise known as a square. So let's take a look at what those would look like. We'll start off with a square, and we'll label the corners, the vertices here, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And remember, we can rotate or we can flip the square. So let's start off with some rotations. We're going to rotate by convention counterclockwise. So I'll just put a little arrow in here to designate we're moving this uh, square around counterclockwise. And so if we do that one time, our 1 will go over to that corner, 2 down here, 3, and 4. And if we keep rotating, we can do another rotation. And we'll get the 1 down here, 2, 3, and 4. And we can do, we'll do two more rotations here to see what happens. One more rotation, we'll put our 1 down here in the southeast corner. And if we do one more rotation, we end up uh, with exactly the square that we started off with. Now, we don't want to be drawing squares uh, for the rest of our lives, uh, as much fun as that may be. So we want to come up with some notation to uh, talk about what we're doing, what sort of rotation or reflection we're doing. So, so far we've only done rotations, and uh, let's give some notation to this. The first square, our original one, We'll call that 1, and that really is the identity uh, function. We, we haven't done anything. We haven't changed it. It is itself. It's the identity. 
And if we do one rotation, well, that's just R. Now, if we do two rotations, that's R composed with itself, and so that's R squared. Uh, this one would be R cubed, and this is R to the fourth, which we see was identical to our original matrix, our original uh, square. And so we've learned here that the order of the element R is four. Now, we can do the same sort of uh, exercise looking at reflection. So let's, again, start off with our original square labeled as such, and let's do a reflection or a flip. Now, we have to be a little careful here about where we're flipping. I'm going to designate this as the axis over which I'm flipping or reflecting. So in other words, we're going to pin down the corners 1 and 3, and then 2 and 4 will switch places. And so the outcome of this reflection will be 1 and 3 in their spots, 4 and 2 are flipped. And we can do this again. See what happens. Again, using our same line, which we're going to reflect over, 1 and 3 are fixed, and these corners will switch Position. So we end up right back with what we started with. So labeling these again, this is uh, what we started with, the identity. After one reflection, we'll call that S, and after two reflections, S composed with itself, we see that's really what we started with. So we learned something else here, which is that the order of the element S is 2. Okay, so this raises a few questions, um, and some of those questions might be, well, uh, what about our inverse? Um, and, and also, we might ask ourselves, well, what about uh, reflections and rotations composed with each other? Um, so we can mix them up. All right, well, first let's take a look at the inverse. If we start off with our answer here. Let me write the 4 there. We'll start off with what we originally had. Um, and we want to ask ourselves, what is the rotation that would have uh, put us in this square? So kind of thinking back one step, what was the rotation, what was the square we had before we did a rotation? It really is just the rotation um, in the opposite direction. So this is our inverse, and notice if you hit that with R, you rotate clockwise, you get back to the identity. The other way to think about it is if you're going back this way, if you start with this uh, square, you can rotate clockwise to get back to the inverse. Some things to notice here, R inverse is the same as R cubed. So we observe following. Um, and, and that's an interesting observation because it suggests the following. You know, we certainly uh, would agree that R inverse um, composed with R, just write the composition in there, so starting with R inverse, composing it with R gives us the identity. That's certainly true. But what may be a little surprising is that uh, you know, R cubed composed with R also gives us, well, let's see, that would be R to the fourth, and that does give us the identity. So we have another name, so to speak, for the inverse of R, and it's R cubed. And that will play a role in the relations uh, between the rotations and the reflections, the generators, if you'd like to call them that, for the group. Okay. So the a last thing here that we want to take a look at uh, is the following. So what about um, SR and what about um, things like SR squared? Or what about uh, RS and SR inverse? Things of that form. So what I'd like to do is I'd like uh, to suggest that you pause the video for a moment, 
and I'd like you to take a look at these following relations and see if you can um, map them out. Start with a square and work it out to see uh, what you will get. So I suggest that you pause here and join us uh, in a minute. I will post the answer in just a second. So we were uh, going to take a look at RS versus SR inverse. So let's take a look here. RS. This really means R composed with S. And so the first thing we're going to do is uh, S. We're going to do S first. Okay, well let's do that. If we start off with our uh, square here, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we perform S, S is our reflection or our flip. We'll pin down these uh, corners and we'll flip the other two. And then the next thing we want to do here is R. So let's do that. Remember, R is a rotation. It's a rotation in the counterclockwise direction, so the number one is going to go over to this northwest corner. So we'll put the one there. Four moves down, three moves over, and two moves up here. And so uh, this is what we get when we do our S. And similarly, if you work through the operations with S, R, inverse, you will find that that is the uh, exact same uh, outcome. So this suggests the following. Uh, for our group D8, we have the following elements. We have 1, R, R squared, R cubed, and remember we don't go any higher because R to the fourth is the identity, so we don't get anything new by adding in more R's. Um, and then we have S, we can combine S with R, SR squared, SR cubed. And if you work that out, those are the only things in D8. Um, but this presentation of, of, or this description of D8, uh, only gives us half the story. It doesn't tell us anything about how these uh, operations work together. It doesn't tell us anything like uh, that RS is SR inverse. And so that information um, is very valuable and we want to have a way to express that. And that's what we call the presentation for our group. So if we take a look at the presentation for D8 in terms of generators, and I'll uh, explain what that means in a moment, uh, we have D8 is equal to the group generated by R and S such that R to the fourth equals S squared equals 1 and RS equals SR inverse. Let's take a look at what this notation uh, means. The brackets here denote that we're talking about a group generated uh, by whatever's inside here. So we're talking, that lets us know we're talking about the group generated by something. Now the first two items here, the R and the S, these are our generators. So in other words, we can generate or we can obtain everything in D8 by just R and S. We can hit R with itself, uh, we can compose S with itself in, in combinations of them, and that will give us all of D8. Furthermore, there are some very specific relationships between R and S 
And that is what is communicated right here. We learn a couple things. We learn that R is order 4, S is order 2. Now, you could write other things here, um, but the convention is that you use the lowest exponent. You know, I could write R8 equals 1, but you, you wouldn't do that. It's, the convention is, is that you write the lowest exponent designating the order of R and S. And then over here, we have this relation RS equals SR inverse, and that also tells us that the group is non-abelian. So these are the relations on generators. So, taking a look at uh, that, we can, we can then use that information to look at things like SR, um, SR. So we say, well, how could we simplify this? We can take a look here because we have a group, we have the associativity property, and so we can associate the R and the S together and work on that operation first. So, we still have the S that was in front. Instead of RS, we can replace that with S R inverse, and we still have the R that was hanging off the back. So all I've done is replace this RS with S R inverse, and that was because that's the one of the relations on our generators. Continuing on, we can simplify further. We know that S S or S squared is the identity. We know that R inverse R is the identity. And so what we find is that S R S R is the identity. In other words, the element SR is order 2.